as you can see, one of the important principles that we're emphasizing here is that it takes a little time. You don't just come up with the box and start putting things on. Brian and Barbara are going to walk us through this procedure. But as you can see, what they did first was to come up, check out everything, lay out everything they needed. They went through the list initially to see what they had. They've laid everything out. And now they're going to walk you through the steps for putting on the protective equipment. So Brian and Barbara, let's give them a, let's give them a hand for agreeing to do this for us. Go ahead. Are we ready? Good morning, New York. I'm Brian Christensen. Uh, as Arjun mentioned, last night we released enhanced guidance for healthcare workers who may be caring for e patients with Ebola. Barbara Smith, an infection preventionist from Mount Sinai, is going to help us with the demonstration. We are recommending that people have a trained observer, which I will be playing in this part, to ensure that they're following proper protocols and are less likely to have an exposure. Today, I'm going to be Barbara's trained observer. As such, I need to wear a gown that is fluid resistant, shoe covers that go up to my mid calf, gloves, and this face shield to protect my face. First thing we're going to do is inspect our personal protective equipment, or PPE, to make sure that we have everything and is laid out in the proper order. This list includes the inner gloves that are made of nitrile, shoe and leg covers that go to the mid-calf, gown that is large enough to allow free movement and is fluid resistant, an N95 respirator, a surgical hood that covers all of the hair, ears, and neck, outer gloves that have an extended cuff, and a face shield that provides additional protection to the face, including skin and, and the eyes. One thing I'll mention here is, is, Brian just pointed out, we're demonstrating one of the two options that are recommended. Either option is recommended. As I mentioned when I talked, that both of these options for the N95 respirator that we're going to demonstrate here, as well as the powered air purifying respirator, both of them have been used successfully to safely care for patients with Ebola. Either option is acceptable. Uh, we are going to demonstrate the option with the N95 here. Next, Barbara's going to make sure that someone is supervising her or even acting as a buddy. The person in my role should be trained on all aspects of PPE and infection control. Her trainer is going to make sure that she is wearing scrubs and washable footwear and that she's removed all personal items such as jewelry, phones, pens, pagers. If Anyone still use pagers? I don't know. <laughs> iPhones, right? <laughs> Next, Barbara is going to clean her hands with alcohol-based hand sanitizer. We're also going to refer to this as hand hygiene. One of the reasons that we recommend the, the scrubs under the equipment is that the, the scrubs just make it easier to put on and take off the equipment. Um, and they ensure that you don't have any of your personal items that you've brought into the, the care area. I do want to note the stage is set up unlike what you'd normally have, but this is of what we can do. This is our clean area, and then we're going to simulate patient care over there, and then this will be the, a dirty area for uh, doffing or removing PPE. So I just want to make sure that we understand that, because this isn't your typical situation. First, she's going to put on a pair of uh, the nitrile gloves. Next, she's going to sit down in a clean chair and put on shoe covers and pull them up to her mid-calf. One of the things that's key with the alcohol-based hand rubs is that uh, it needs to dry. So when you put it on your hands, don't 
don't rush. Don't start putting on your gloves before it's dry. Put it on your hands, use it, let, let it dry fully before you proceed to the next step. One thing I want to mention with the shoe covers and with the gown and even your gloves, you want to make sure everything fits. I mean, that can be a, a problem if you have the wrong size. And so you really want to make, you know, check and practice. And that's why we, you know, you want to practice it so you know what size as well. Barbara's now going to put on the gown and make sure that the inner gloves are tucked under the sleeves of the gown. As Brian mentioned, you'll be identifying the healthcare personnel who are going to be part of the, the group of folks who are going to be providing the care, doing the evaluations. Know what sizes those folks wear so that your uh, clean area, your supply area, is stocked with the right sizes for that small team of the healthcare personnel who would be doing the evaluations or providing the care. You can see that Brian is helping. That's one of the roles of the trained observer is both to observe, to make sure that the steps are being followed correctly, but it's also to help. Some of this uh, putting on and taking off could require a little bit of help, and that's another reason why the trained observer is there. It's to help so that everything is done correctly. Next, Barbara's going to put on the N95 respirator and put this top strap over first over her head and keep it above her ears. And then the bottom strap goes along the back of the neck. And then Barbara's going to check to make sure the N95 is sealed. Barbara is now going to put on the hood and pull it down to cover her hair and ears. So this is an important thing to note. She, you don't want to adjust the, the PPE when you're doing patient care, so she made the adjustment now so she, you won't do it later. Next, she's going to put on the second pair of gloves and make sure the cuffs are pulled over the sleeves of the gown. Again, two pairs of gloves. Do this to provide that added margin of safety so that there is a, an outer pair of gloves and an inner pair of gloves. We, again, think that reduces the risk of contamination. It provides the largest margin of safety possible. Again, it, it's key to take your time. There's a lot going on here, obviously, but you'll notice that they're not rushing. They're taking their time, checking to see what's right, making sure that everything is comfortable. Um, when you do this in your hospitals, hopefully there won't be this many cameras and people watching you, <laughs> maybe just one trained observer. But it's important to take your time with this. Get it right, make sure it fits, make sure it's comfortable. The last item Barbara is going to put on is the face shield to protect the front and sides of her face and her eyes. So now, now Barbara is going to turn around so I can inspect her. She's also going to go through a range of motions so that we know that she can move comfortably. And I'm going to make sure that all areas of the body are covered. <laughs> <laughs> And that's really important to make sure you know, when you're in the room, you do not want to be adjusting the protective equipment. You don't want to have to be moving sleeves, pulling on shoe covers, uh, adjusting things. The range of motion exercises before you go and make sure that the PPE is ready, it's comfortable, and you're not going to have to adjust it once you go in the room. So before Barbara goes in to see the patient, 
we're going to disinfect your hands using the alcohol rub. Again, this is that step that is uh, different from what we've recommended in the past. This is disinfecting the gloved hands with alcohol-based hand rub. Um, and this is, again, that step that we're recommending to provide an added margin of safety. Now let's pretend Barbara's going to go work in a patient room. When she is done, we need to remove the PPE and make sure she doesn't get exposed. Again, the key here is she's not leaving the patient care room until she knows that the trained observer is ready and there to help her remove her PPE. So when it's time for her to come out, whatever way that you guys do this in your hospital, she signals to make sure that the trained observer is there and she does not begin any of the removal of the equipment until the trained observer is there and ready to help. As Arjun just described, now that Barbara is done providing patient care, as her trained observer, I'm there to help her get her PP off safely and discard an appropriate waste container. So Barbara's going to turn around and I'm going to inspect her PP, make sure she has no visible contamination, cuts or tears. Again, if there was visible contamination, uh, using a wipe to decontaminate the, the external surfaces. As I mentioned, it's uh, one of these new recommendations, not something we normally do, but we, she would use a wipe to clean the protective equipment um, if there was any sign of contamination before she uh, proceeded with removing the equipment. First, we're going to disinfect her outer gloved hands, and you'll notice we're going to do this after each step. And I'm going to maintain a safe distance. Of so you'll see we have two chairs here, and it's important that she's out of she's contaminated now. So she's first going to use the remove booties chair, and then we have another chair which you will see uh, shortly. So Barbara's going to sit down and carefully remove the shoe covers. And everything when you remove, you want to make sure it's very slow and deliberate as to not risk any exposure. You can see that you, we have a trash can on stage. Obviously very important in this uh, area where we're removing the PPE to have a uh, trash can that's readily accessible and easy to get the trash into. Next, she's going to disinfect and remove her outer gloves. You can see that after she finished removing the suit cover, she stood and had Brian watch uh, to make sure again that there was no evidence of contamination, that careful observation after each step of the removing. She's carefully inserting the clean inner glove hand underneath the glove to make sure that she does not contaminate the other gloved hand. Now we're going to inspect the inner gloves to see if there are any visible contamination cuts or tears, and, and then perform hand hygiene. Again, the glove disinfection, reducing the risk of contamination, increased margin of safety. Now Barbara is going to remove the face shield by tilting her head forward, grabbing the rear strap and pulling it over her head without touching the front of the face shield. Again, we're going to perform hand hygiene. Get a sense for how many times during this protocol, right? Clean hands save lives. Similar to the face shield, Barbara's going to tilt her head slightly forward and carefully remove the surgical hood. A 
Again, we will perform hand hygiene. Get a sense from this that you'll need a fair bit of alcohol hand rub, right? In the area where you're going to be taking off this equipment. Now Barbara's going to slowly and carefully remove the gown. She's going to pull the gown away from the body, rolling it inside out, only touching the inside of the gown. This is where, if necessary, the trained observer, since I'm in PPE, I can assist. And a good trick Barbara's going to show is to step on the inside of the gown to help remove it. Because remember, her shoes are clean and the inside of the gown is clean. See, she's taking care to make sure that it's the inner surface that she's touching. Again, we're going to perform hand hygiene. And now we're actually going to remove the inner gloves. One of the things you just saw Barbara verifying is that she's got another pair of gloves. You need extra gloves in the place where you're taking off the equipment uh, and you can see that she was verifying that in fact those those gloves were there and were ready. We're going to perform hand hygiene on the bare hands and ensure that your hands are dry before putting on the new clean pair of gloves. This is again one of those added margin of safety issues here, right? So why put on a clean pair of gloves You've already cleaned your hands and everything, but she's about to take off the mask. So we recommend that you clean the hands, put on clean gloves, and now she'll proceed to the next step. Now Barbara's going to remove the N95 respirator by slightly tilting her head forward, pulling the bottom strap over her head, followed by the top strap, without ever touching the front of the respirator. And that's key, that front of the respirator, right, is the place where if contamination is uh, going to occur, that's the place where the, the risk is highest. So when you remove the N95 respirator, you don't want to touch that front part. Again, we're going to perform hand hygiene. Now Barbara's going to sit on a clean chair and use a disinfectant to wipe clean her shoes. Again, I'm emphasizing this over and over again, margin of safety, margin of safety. Her shoes were under the boot covers, right? But margin of safety, we're going to disinfect the shoes anyway just to be safe. Again, this is a reason why it is really important to have chairs in the area where you're taking off the protective equipment. Uh, it's much, much easier to do a lot of this when you're seated. Uh, you do need these two chairs, again, margin of safety, one that you sit in when you're uh, coming right out with your gown that could be potentially contaminated, and one after you've removed the gown. Barbara's go again going to do hand hygiene with the gloves on. And she's going to then remove the inner gloves. We're going to perform hand hygiene on the bare hands. We're going to do one final inspection of Barbara to make sure she doesn't have any visible contamination on her scrubs. Everything looks good. Please give a round of applause for our model, Barbara Smith from Mount Sinai. He's a great so let's give them both a huge hand, folks. This is 
really difficult to do with a huge audience and uh, really want to thank them so much for, for walking us through this. And if we could get this mic, if we could get this mic turned on, Barbara, uh, maybe you can tell folks a little bit about what it was like to, you know, to do the training the first time when, you, when you're doing all of this, just to share a little bit of the experience with I, I getting trained up. I think having done training with this and a couple other models, it's, it's tantamount to your safety to just practice, practice, practice. Don't think, even just removing the gloves, you've done that hundreds of times in a, in a week. So just don't rely on what your past knowledge is. Have somebody vet that you really know how to do each step of the way. Okay, one more round of applause for these guys. Fantastic.